Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is closing out the week on a strong note. We're already at Thursday. It is unbelievable how fast we are and rapidly we are moving, which is another reason to acknowledge and recognize the urgency of now. Uh, we tend to think that we have time to do everything, whether it's pursue our careers, whether it's to start a new business, whether it is to become serious about love. We tend to do that. Well, as, an, as, as individuals, as a community, we also must recognize the importance and the urgency of now. Things that we need to handle need to be addressed now. And so that's something that I'm going to challenge you on up front. Uh, as usual, you know the routine. If you like what you hear, see, click the like button, click the share button, subscribe. If you believe in the work that we've done in the community advocacy program right now, I'm literally, as I talk to you, headed to the shop to meet up with some guys to help a young lady that was pictured on the corner here, five kids, uh, out in the rain here in Houston earlier this morning, reached out to them, uh, trying to get that squared away. And this is just one small thing that we do. It's not small to this person, but small thing that we do in the grand scheme of advocacy and activity in our community. Uh, very little of which is actually in any way consistently funded outside of my own resources. Uh, but with that being said, look, if you believe in the work we do, go in the description box, look at how you can give and support our work and do so. Um, what I want to talk to you now is about something that in the, pro pro in the process of addressing this whole individualism thing, which is something I've been on for about a week now. Uh, and I'm gonna to continue to talk about it because it's one of the biggest issues and one of the most frustrating and devastating forces. That's that Dr. Amos Wilson talked about it years ago. Um, and nothing has changed except for the fact that we're still pursuing individualism as if it is the panacea for our ills and our frustrations and our disappointments and our oppression and it's the absolute opposite. Collectivity and unity is what we should be acting for. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover told us um, uh, through an interview when he was asked what is the greatest threat to national security, he said black unity. Man, we were at, we were in a cold war uh, with the Soviet Union, uh, Soviet Union, we had just had the Cuban Missile Crisis where literally missiles were pointed at the United States. We have all these issues going on in uh, um, the Middle East and so many other things that were things you could look at and say, okay, this is a threat to our national security, but he said black unity. It speaks to volumes on a number of different ways, and I'm not gonna get into it because that's not my primary point here, but unity is a part of what we need to understand in this thing. But in talking about this, one thing that has come to mind is this: is the truth that social media has become the cord of discord and the cord of dissent that is strangling the life out of scholarship in the black community. What do I mean by that? When I came up, there were the Dr. France Chris Wells, and Dr. Heinrich, John Heinrich Clarks, the uh, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakin, and Dr. Amos Wilson. Um, there were uh, Asa Hilliards and, and all of these great minds and scholars who were writing books on our history, books on our issues, Dr. Claude Anderson writing books on economics and all these different things. I mean, decades ago, these people were out there and they were out there and there was a level of appreciation for them. Even the terms master teacher was used a lot because they were bringing about information and consciousness and awareness uh, to our history, to our plight, to our behavior, gaining an understanding of why things happened to us and they were revered. Social media has given uh, way and a platform for people to dissent without foundation, to to offer opinion that has no uh, empirical 
backing to show up and go toe to toe with someone who has invested their life into gaining an understanding, not from a philosophical or opinionated position, but or a, even a, a subjective position, but from an objective and highly studied and experiential position, and then come in and weigh in and literally can say it in a way and you'll find they'll be a follow. There's so many people out there right now teaching, preaching, and pushing highly erroneous concepts and ideas with no scientific backing, with no social uh, support, with no historical support, solely based off of the fact that it feels good to them and they know how to deliver it and it feels good to you. And so you, you jump on it and they're building these followings and it has no ability whatsoever to support true black liberation, true black empowerment, true black uh, growth and expansion. Uh, no elevation of our youth, no uh, closing of the wealth gap, no uh, political clout or impact, no social impact, still at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder, but we are gassed up though, because we are having, and the crazy thing is about it, and this is what really truly uh, probably bothers me more than anything, is that there's, in many of these instances, the situation where these very people who have you gassed up are people who are being paid to misguide you. Uh, man, Malcolm told us, so many others told us after Malcolm that all skin folk are not your kin folk. Black faces in, in places of influence can be a very dangerous thing when they don't have our best interests at heart and they have their pockets in their stomachs guiding their policy and their practices and yet here we go uh, another thing that i see uh social media allowing for and platform these platforms allowing for are people to come on and troll and and pass out opinions again without any empirical or pragmatic support without any historical reference without any socioeconomic reference without any real true examination of the facts under any true structural uh patterns of examination it's just what they think and because it's their opinion and because they like how it sounds and because it's different than what what's always been done everything yes we definitely need to be doing something different than what's been done in the past but it has to have some support it has to have strategic uh, support There has to be some evidence of its efficacy before we go out and do things just, we can't do things just because it sounds like the thing to do. We cannot continue to move and, 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 and do that, but that's what it's done. It's literally strangled. Social media has become the court of discord that is strangling scholarship out of the black community. Um, the people who are really putting in the work, the people who have anchored themselves in the trenches of research, in the trenches of examination, in the trenches of being able to dissertate and to uh, share and disseminate their findings in a way that's understandable, in a way that can be received and understood and applied there's a problem because uh, all of this dissension is pushing against it and it's not an accident. People are being pushed and gaslighted and given open uh, space to come out and attack the truth. Now the truth will defend itself over time but a lot of things are lost in the process. And I just had to, I had to address, I'm not gonna get off until, like I said, I gotta get in here with this meeting about this young lady. Uh, if anybody's in Houston uh, that has resources for a family of six, five children and one adult woman, um, she needs a place to stay. Uh, if there's some job support, uh, obviously if she gets a job, she's going to need uh, child care. Uh, the whole nine, uh, if you're in the Houston area, reach out to me, CEO at the Odyssey Project 21.top. Um, but we definitely have to do some things differently. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, I want to thank you for giving me your time. 
Uh, with that being said, look in the description box if you believe in the work we're doing and we continue to do. Um, look in the description box and determine how you want to give and give. There are a number of different ways you can give and different programs you can give to or give in general, uh, but give. On that note, I'm about to check out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.